Hello everyone, this is Bill Kelly for creativecow.net and today we'll be containing pyrocluster particles within a specific object in Cinema 4D. So let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. Now as you can see the pyrocluster particles are staying within the boundaries of our text. And later we're going to make a little adjustment and keep the particles within the boundaries of our object without the object itself being seen. And as you can see here, it's a pretty good way to get a smoky text effect. Now, the cool thing is you can contain the particles within any object you want to. You can contain the particles within a sphere and get a great crystal ball, uh, limit them to within a particular part of your overall scene, and a lot of other things. Okay, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is change my output to a standard widescreen. And now I'm going to go to MoGraph and select MoText. In the text box, I'm going to type creative cow and set my alignment to middle. For font, I'm going to choose Futura Condensed Medium. And let's swing our view around a little bit to the front. And I'm going to change my depth about 50. And go over to Caps and select Filled Cap. And I'm going to change the radius of both of these to 2. Now let's click on the floor icon and add a floor and make a material for our floor. I'm going to double click in the box to bring up a new material and I'm just going to bring down my brightness a little bit and apply that to the floor. Now let's bring a light into our scene. Bring this up. Over. And a little bit forward. I'm going to change the shadow maps to soft. And let's add one more light. Let's bring it to the front, over to the side a little bit, and up. And I'm going to bring the intensity down to maybe 20%. Now let's make a glass material. I'm going to double click in here. And in color, I'm just going to choose a very light blue. Come down to transparency, click that on. Bring down my brightness just a little bit and change the refraction to 1.4. I'm going to click on reflection. Activate that and choose Fresnel. In Specular, I'm going to come and bring the width down a little bit, bring the height up, and now we've got a glass material. So let's apply that to our text and hit Command R and render our view. And now we've got a pretty good looking glass material. Uh, to make this a little more realistic, uh, what we're going to do is actually go back to our text object duplicate it, and I'm going to hit T to bring up the scale tool, and just scale this down slightly. And the reason we're doing this is because glass has an inside and an outside layer. So this is going to help it look more realistic. So if we render again, now we've got a pretty good looking glass material here. So now let's make our emitters. I'm going to go to the simulate menu, and choose Emitter, and hit the R key to bring up the Rotate tool, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and now click on the Emitter, and change the size so that it encompasses all the text. Now I'm going back to the particle settings, and I'm going to set each of these to 30. Reduce the visibility to 60%. And let's change how many frames we have here. Let's make it 400 in our timeline. And now set stop emission to 400. The speed I'm going to change to 100. 
with a 50% variation. The rotation, I'm going to choose 360. And now let's duplicate our emitter by holding down the command key and dragging. And let's rotate this one 180 degrees. And hit E to bring up the move tool and move it up over the top of our letters. Now let's duplicate it again. R to bring up the rotation tool. And rotate this 90 degrees. Move it over. Duplicate that one. Rotate it. Negative 180 degrees. And move this over to the other side. Now I'm going to select these last two emitters and just size them down so they're about the size of our text. And then move them into position. So now we can see we've got our particles going all through the letters. Let's make our pyro cluster material. I'm going to select Create, go to Shader, Pyro Cluster, and I'm going to do the same thing and select Volume Tracer. So now let's edit our pyro cluster material. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is bring my volume down to 80%, bring the luminosity up to 50 and I'm going to switch my density to 2. Uh, density is something that can really affect your render time with Pyro Cluster. 2 should be a good number for what we're doing here today. And now on color, I'm going to come down, click in the middle, and bring up my color. And I'm just going to make it a pure green. Now, according to the manual, if you check Use Intersection, Pyro Cluster particles will be constrained within an object. Um, I tried that, and in this particular case, it didn't work. I think it's because the emitters are outside of the object, and even if we move them so part of the emitter is inside the text, they're still going to be part of the emitter outside of the text. Now in the Age tab, I'm going to select the Radius and bring this to black. And what this is going to do is have the particle start off small and then grow to its full size. In shape, I'm going to go down and select auto rotation, turn it on, and change these to 360. And change my maximum visible to 1,000. I don't think we'll get 1,000 particles, but uh, we don't want it to run out. Now in illumination, I'm going to turn that on and set self-illumination to 70%. Shadow, I'm going to actually come and turn shadows off. Uh, this is another thing that really affects your render time with Pyro Cluster. If you turn them on, you'll get a better looking effect. But I think for what we're using it for today, uh, we don't need them on. And it's going to drastically reduce our render time. And in noise, I'm going to change the noise type to fractal. The grow radius, I'm going to switch to 30%. Scale, 300. Peak blend, 80. And I'm going to switch detail to 5. Phase, I'm going to make 590%. Uh, really what this does is this kind of affects the shape. As you can see here as I'm going down, it's just different numbers make different shapes, kind of. So let me set this back to 590. Again, I'm going to increase to 60%. And the low threshold to 20. So now we've got our pyro cluster material, and now let's go to the volume tracer. And we're going to switch the render mode to hazy. And click on the volume light. Now let's make an environment object to put our volume tracer on. And apply our pyro cluster material to the emitters. It's going to apply it to the first one, and then command drag. And now let's hit the play button, stop, do a render, and see what we've got. Well, this isn't exactly what we're looking for. We want the particles to be inside the letters, not outside. 
So what we're going to do here is actually go back to our text object, duplicate it again, hit the T key for scale, and scale this slightly down a little bit more. And this is going to be the inside of where we're going to keep our particles. Now we're going to take the volume tracer and bring it down and apply it to the text object. What this does is when you have environment, uh, that's the whole world of your scene. And by bringing the volume tracer down and putting it on our text object, we're telling Cinema 4D to keep the particles within our object rather than the entire environment. So I can actually go ahead and just delete this environment object. The whole reason I brought it out was to show the difference between the environment object and applying the volume tracer to our text object. Now if we go back and run this again and do a render. Now we can see our particles are just confined within our letters. They're not filled up so we have a little more work to do. Um, what we could do is just select all of our emitters and just bump up the amount of particles but that's going to also increase the render time. What we want to do is put some deflectors up here and keep bouncing the particles back and forth. So I'm going to go back to the simulate menu, choose particles and deflector. And now let's rotate the deflector 90 degrees. And let's size this up to the same size as our emitter. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with the emitters. So I'm going to duplicate this, move it up, duplicate it again, rotate it, bring it over. Duplicate it again. Rotate it 180 degrees. Bring this over to the other side. Select the last two. Bring the size down. and move them into place. Now let's go back and play our timeline again. And now we're keeping all the particles within a confined area. Now if we want we can actually go over and bring in a little turbulence. and set the scale to maybe 10%. So now let's add a camera to our scene. And I'm going to switch this to a wide angle and turn the camera on. Let's go to the coordinates and just zero out these rotations. Just our height. and zoom in a little bit. And this is where we want our camera move to end. So I'm just going to go here somewhere in the middle and set a keyframe. Okay, now let's set our camera move. I'm going to go back to frame 80 and that's where we're going to start. And that's just in order to let the particles generate for a little while uh, before we make our camera move. So I'm going to zoom in on the C, rotate around, we zoom in a little more, and set a keyframe. Now I'm going to go up to frame 180, rotate around the W, set another keyframe, and let's check out our camera move.
Okay, that's not too bad, but there's a couple things we can fix in here. Um, first thing is coming across here. I think we're a little too close to the letters. So we're going to zoom out a little bit and set a keyframe. The other thing that I see is we're losing part of the W as we come out. So in order to fix that, what I'm going to do is right click on the camera, go to Cinema 4D Tags and select Target, and then bring our text object and set it as the target object. So now we come across and we can see there's still a problem. Um, and that's now we're focusing down here on the bottom of the letters. And that's because the target camera chooses the axis point of the letters, which in this case, it happens to be the bottom. So we have to move the axis point of the letters up to the middle where we want the camera to be looking. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to make these editable. So I'm going to select them all, hit C, and now we can move our axis point. Um, I have the axis selector checked here. And I'm just going to move that up so that we're right in the middle. And now if we look at the animation, we're getting the camera move that we want to get. And now the last thing I want to show you is how to get that smoky text effect, which is actually really simple to do. All we have to do here is stop our glass layers from rendering. And now the only thing that will be rendering is the volume tracer. And our volume tracer is only the volume of the letters, not the letters themselves. So if we come through here and now render, we're just getting the pyro cluster particles within the volume of our object and not seeing the object itself. So I'll render that back out here. And if you want a little bit more of an effect um, of it sitting on the ground, um, just come into your render settings and choose ambient occlusion. And you'll get a nice little shadow on the ground from our letters. And that pretty much wraps things up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Bill Kelly for creativecow.net.